So this is what we have. The diffusion, apparent diffusion coefficient across a polycrystalline material would be the lattice term within the uniform lattice term plus a green boundary contribution. And the green boundary contribution is the green boundary coefficient times a proportion of the green boundary. Okay? Or if we rewrite, we rearrange this, we put dl to the left, we would have 1 plus delta divided by d times db divided by dl. This is just the rewrite of the top equation. Make sense? Okay? So, the so called relative importance of lattice or green boundary diffusion depends on the ratio of this term, the ratio of delta dB divided by d dl. How much of the lattice will contribute versus how much the green boundary will contribute depends on this ratio. Okay, and normally, normally dB greater than dl, that's what we said, right? Normally the diffusion coefficient along boundary would be greater than the lattice. Okay, not too, not too difficult to understand. And the QB is roughly, what people find out the empirically, is roughly half of QL. What does this equation mean? The migration, diffusion, energy barrier, activation energy for green boundary is typically only roughly half of if it's within the green, within the lattice. Hmm. Makes sense, right? So, let's consider the temperature effect. How would the temperature impact the diffusion for this polycrystalline material? At what temperature green boundary would play dominant role? At what the temperature lattice would play in the dominant role. We are plotting something here. What are we plotting? LD for diffusion coefficient take log with respect to turn, right? Versus inverse temperature. Okay, based on the typical Arrhenius equation, we would have straight plots, straight line plots, right? The dB would look something like this. On this plot, which side is higher temperature? Left side, right, 1 over T. The smaller 1 over T, which means the higher the temperature. The lower the temperature, this 1 over T is larger. So, okay. And this in log scale on the uh, vertical axis. And typically, dB greater than dL. At any given temperature, the diffusion coefficient for boundary, green boundary, would be higher than lattice. So this line is higher than this line. But we said, okay, QB is only half of QL. This is B. QB, if we plot log D versus 1 over T, the slope just tells us the so-called uh, activation energy, right? The slope here is our activation energy. So if QB is only half of QL, which means the slope for this curve for green boundary is less than, I'm talking about absolute value. I'm talking about absolute value. The slope here would be less than the slope for the lattice. Make sense? What does the slope mean? It means how fast does the diffusion coefficient change with temperature, right? And between boundary and the lattice, which one changes faster with temperature? That's what we draw the lattice, which is consistent with what we put here, right? The lattice has a higher so-called activation energy reflecting here would have a bigger absolute number of so-called slope. Okay? So, I'm drawing one dashed line. What am I drawing? Delta divided by D times dB. For a fixed material, the 
typical delta and typical small d, the green boundary thickness and the green dimension are the same, right, for typical material. So this number is just uh, parallel to the dB, but a little bit lower. How much lower? Depends on the relative size of green boundary versus green. It will be lower. This this dashed line is just parallel to dB, but uh, lower. Lower by how much? By this ratio, delta over, over D. Again, what is delta? Thickness for the green boundary. What is small d, what, what I'm pointing? It's just uh, the average green size. Uh, average green size, right? The typical delta over small d is a as we ask again, small number, big number, greater than one, smaller than one, typically much smaller than one, right? Delta over D, small D is much smaller than one, because green boundary typically is much, much small compared with the average green. So I would have this curve, but lower than DB, okay? So what people find is, this dashed line and this original DL would be because they are different slope. They are going to have certain crossing point, right? They are going to have certain crossing point. And I'm drawing this red line here. That's kind of our system, our the polycrystalline material over our apparent diffusion coefficient overall apparent diffusion coefficient okay now let's consider remember on this plot the horizontal axis is what one over temperature right which means the higher temperature is to the left lower temperature is to the right what we are plotting is just okay Remember, our overall diffusion coefficient is lattice term plus this term, right? The lattice term plus the green boundary contribution term. And look at uh, what we have. When the temperature is very, very high, which means which side, left or right? When the temperature is high, left or right? Left. When you look at from the left, let's look at here. When the temperature is high, the contribution DL, which is this guy, which is original this line, versus this green boundary contribution, which one is much larger? Definitely the DL term, right? DL term, which is DL, goes like uh, this. DL term is much larger than the green boundary contribution. Make sense? Remember, we are plotting on what scale? Log scale, which means a little bit difference is a lot, right? So when the temperature is on the left side of this plot, which means the temperature is high or low? High, the lattice term is much larger than my, what is this term? It's just this, right? The so-called green boundary condition. When the temperature is much higher, the green, green lattice term is much higher than the lattice sorry, then the green boundary contribution, okay? On the other hand, when the temperature is what? Where well, I'm pointing, low, right? One over T is a large number, which means T is a small number. When the temperature is low, now lattice term is what? Much smaller than this term, right? What is this term? This is our green boundary contribution. It's a diffusion coefficient of green boundary, but modulated by this dimension ratio, right? But even that, when the temperature is low enough, the green boundary contribution would be much, much higher than the lattice term. So it means at a lower temperature, the diffusion pretty much determined by the diffusion through the lattice also called a boundary make sense so that's what we said at a low temperature green boundary diffusion would dominate on the other hand 
at high temperature, the lattice term, DL term at a higher temperature on the left side of this plot would dominate. Okay? And the transition, what people find, the transition, why is the transition? Typically, it's roughly a quarter, sorry, three quarters of the melting point. That's a transition, kind of below that, pretty much determined by the green boundary, by def defect, a lot of case. Okay? And it's more pronounced for material with so-called smaller greens. Make sense? Smaller greens, which means the average uh, small d, the green size is smaller, while the green boundary remains constant. Okay? Green boundary diffusion, what people find also would be depends on the specific boundary, or sometimes depend on even directions. These are the details we will not uh, go uh, in there. Okay?